This is our investigation of the Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. We went to the Old South Pittsburgh Hospital looking for a paranormal experience, and that's exactly what we got. I met Gordon, who's a former police officer and has now been a paranormal investigator for the past 20 years while my wife and I were down in Savannah, Georgia. We decided to check out the Sorrel Weed House, a place that's known to be haunted, and Gordon, who runs the Paranormal Investigations Unit, was there. I've had approximately 107 investigations, uh, well over 2,000 audio captures, one true orb capture, um, and I, can, I couldn't even tell you everything in between. He found out I did video production work and we talked afterwards about possibly doing some other investigations at various places around the country. Just him, myself, and our equipment to see what we could find. We talked about where to go and after a couple months settled on a place neither of us had ever been to or even knew much about. The plan was to meet him at the Chattanooga airport and then spend the next two nights at the Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, one of the most haunted places in Tennessee. The land that the hospital was built on has a rich history that's ideal for creating restless spirits. During the Civil War, it was part of where the Battle of Shiloh occurred, which is said to have been one of the bloodiest battles of the war up to that point. In the 1920s, there was a plantation on the land where a large fire broke out and burned seven children to death. The hospital itself opened in 1959 and functioned for the next 39 years, during which time there were many lawsuits, wrongful deaths, and child abuse deaths, including a young boy who choked to death on a balloon while playing in the waiting room. He's said to be one of the many spirits haunting the facility, and people who investigate often report hearing the laughs of a child inside. It's located in the middle of nowhere, and there are reports of a few doctors doing experimental medical procedures on various patients. These procedures were executed by physicians that may have lacked the talent to work at a more prestigious hospital. Immediately upon entering this place, it felt heavy. The air was thick and the place was very dark. The hospital has three floors, a basement, main floor, and second floor. And there's many nooks and crannies, so even in the middle of the day, there are portions of the hospital that are pitch black. We were the only two people in the entire place for two days. We locked the entrance behind us and prepared for the investigation. I've never done a proper investigation like this before, so I followed Gordon's lead. He set up our home base in the main foyer and ran wires from his computer to six different cameras set up all around the hospital. They recorded the entire time we were there. 150 feet. Will I get scared? Are you wanting to get scared? Yeah, there's anything that's right there. That's a good question, you know? That is a good question. Are you wanting to get scared or are you wanting to see activity? There's a difference. Well, seeing activity would frighten me. First few hours is always a verification. Get something, go and get something captured. Audio wise, K2 wise, any, any equipment to get them to activate. He was well equipped and had items like K2 meters, which measured temperature and electromagnetic field changes, a grid light that would show if anything walked through it, a ghost box that continuously records audio, both audible and inaudible to the human ear, while simultaneously blocking out all radio transmissions so we don't accidentally pick up any sound from them. He also had a night vision camera that I was going to record all the investigations on. The rocking horse has what's called a geophone on there. It detects seismic movement. If there's any vibrations, which you can feel, I'm tapping on the floor. I got it sent really sensitive. So if the horse moves or if somebody's in the hallway while we're not, it sets it off. Once night came, we waited until after dinner to begin our first search. 
I was constantly checking over my back, feeling exposed and vulnerable that something would creep up from behind. Did somebody go in this hallway? Oh! We would hit a particular spot in the hospital for around 20 to 25 minutes at a time. Gordon always had his audio recorder rolling and I followed with the camera. After each run, we would review our recordings, regroup, and then do it again in a different spot. There were several times we felt a presence or heard noises that we couldn't explain, and it was scary. But that's not to say that they were all the sounds of ghosts. It could have been a lot of things, and considering the amount of decay within the hospital, most of them were likely noises related to the building breaking down. Most of them, but not all. When our investigation was completed, two nights of staying up until 4 or 5 a.m. and getting a few hours sleep, we didn't catch anything on camera. However, we did capture two sounds that are hard to explain and sound very much like voices. One female and the other male. Neither of them were heard by us at the time they happened, but were picked up by the audio recording devices and once we amplified the audio, we were able to hear them. Typically, the human range for hearing is between 20 and 20,000 hertz. A man speaks anywhere from 85 to 155 hertz, and a woman between 165 and 255. These recordings were both around 17 hertz, just under our threshold of hearing. The first one occurred when we were starting out on one of the searches on the first night. We were on the ground floor and passing by the geriatric ward, and what we caught sounded like the voice of an older woman yelling, Help me. It's far from the background, but if you listen closely, you can hear it. Here it is again with the audio cleaned up as best we could. It's tough to hear, but it's there. One more time. After our investigation, I looked into more details on the old South Pittsburgh Hospital website, and they say that on this floor there seems to be a woman in pain, and that she has been heard by many people and caught on audio before screaming. The next one happened on the second floor on the second night, in the area that many people have encountered the large shadow figure of a man. Again from their sight, this figure stands about six feet tall lurks around corners and has been caught on EVPs saying, get out. This part of the hospital felt particularly heavy and is a very dark place. At the time, it was hard to know whether or not what I was feeling was caused by my own self being scared or if I was actually feeling the presence of some sort of spirit. But after listening to this, it seems that we were in fact in the presence of something. Here you'll hear us talking and Gordon says, I don't even feel like I'm being watched right now. I respond by asking, you do? And he says no. After that, you hear a distinctly male voice say what sounds like, down here. Have a listen. I don't even feel like I'm being watched right now. You do? No. Here it is again. Was the spirit responding to Gordon saying he didn't feel like he was being watched to look down here? No. 
It was, for sure, a creepy and haunted place, and there's no doubt in my mind that spirits live all over that hospital. Who they are exactly, I have no idea. At times it was intense, and other times eerily quiet, but it was an adventure and fun to be along for the ride with a seasoned investigator like Gordon. I want to thank the people at Old South Pittsburgh Hospital for letting us visit. If you're interested in visiting it for yourself, there's a link for their site below, so check that out. If you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments below, and hopefully we'll be able to get out there and do more investigations soon. Thanks for watching.